Good morning. <laughs> we got Blanca back today for some of her favorite postures. <laughs> but it turns out that it's actually perfect planning because today's um, yama is non-possessiveness. So really letting go of the death grip we have on certain things. Um, I know myself, I tend to be a little obsessive compulsive about where my shoes go and how things are organized <laughs> and how things should be, of course. Life doesn't always pan out that way. So loosening up a little bit and just letting things be as they are. Um, we'll play with a couple of poses like camel and virasana as we get going, which are a little uncomfortable perhaps, and maybe you can't get into them. Maybe your knees are busted, hips are uh, tight or whatever it is. Um, but we're gonna work on letting go a little bit. All right, so Blanca here is gonna get started on her mat. We're gonna start in downward facing. If you have blocks and things you like uh, to support your practice, go ahead and grab them. There's no rush, you can always press pause and then come right back. Right, but even as you enter your downward facing dog, try not to launch right into all the automatic moves. Find breath first. See if you can pause a little, let go of any expectations about how you thought you might feel as you arrive to your mat this morning or afternoon, evening, whenever you're doing this. So as you come into your first downward facing dog, try not to be automatic about it. Try to take a moment to see how your body feels. See if you can't drop your head a little bit heavier and just let go of all the expectations you had maybe about how your practice was gonna go this morning. Maybe you're not as energetic as you thought as you popped out of bed or cruise from your living room or whatever you're up to. Um, three breaths. Just drop your jaw, right? fan the fingers, start to squeeze some strength into the wrists. And as you reach your right toes behind you, it might feel good to peel open. You can go for that, roll your ankles out, wiggle your toes. Squeeze your left biscuit. We're gonna bring that knee right towards your nose to step low lunge. So you step low lunge, take a moment to activate the hips, find the strength in your legs, and then sweep your arms to the sky. Crescent lunge. Really working on the foundation of the low back. So engage those buns of steel, press them underneath you, and start to lift gently on the inhales up the length of the spine. Yeah, take one more breath, maybe lift your gaze, and exhale, drop your palms, step to the front of your mat. Toes touch, inhale to lengthen, and exhale, fold. Yeah, rise all the way up to standing. A couple of breaths, it might feel really good to reach up and over or side to side. Just roll the shoulders down, again, doing a little bit of inventory, no judgment, just feeling your way through your body, and as you exhale through center, fold. Inhale to flat back, and as you exhale, step back to high plank, pause. Maybe bring your knees to the mat, right? find that press away from the mat first so your chest muscles are engaged, and then come through low plank. Upward facing, or maybe cobra. I'm gonna pause here, three breaths. Again, do a little bit of inventory. You're pressing the tops of your feet into your mat. You're gonna squeeze those buns of steel, lift your knees a little bit, and then lift that right foot, just a hair, Feeling the balance come into the low sacrum, hip girdles, shoulders are active. One more reach. Exhale, bring the palm, what is that, your hoof? <laughs> Down and we'll check out the other side. Yeah. Three, two. Just feeling the difference in the body, feeling that stability. As you come down to curl your toes if you'd like, cat. So lower the knees, start to round and press for three. You can tuck your chin, you can tuck the bum. Squeeze the belly up and in. A little bit of support for the spine as you start to come through neutral. We'll open cow. So work the heart open first. Work a little rinse in the sacrum, right? Support your low back and then work the throat opener. You're gonna breathe all the way to meet the chin. And as you exhale, extended puppy. Curl your toes if you'd like. Tented fingertips, press those sits bones back. Your hips don't need to meet the heels but you're using your shoulder blades, kind of pressing them behind you and down to work the spine a little bit more back to the center of your body. Slowly, as you breathe your way towards tabletop, come onto your forms, we'll set up dolphin. Elbows right underneath the shoulders, you can prayer palm it, no white knuckles, curl your toes and drive your hips up and back. Yeah, a little bend in your knees, so again, like down dog, you're driving your sits bones to the sky, 
You can look up between the thumbs if that's comfortable on the neck, but you're gonna work your feet a little bit closer together. Right foot is reaching to the sky. You can feel open if you'd like, but just spend three breaths here. Again, engaging the right glute, pressing a little stretch through the front of the hip, but still from forearms, pressing your sits bones to the sky. Again, stability in your low back. Breathe one more time and exhale, knee towards the nose. Come into that dolphin plank and we're coming right into half pigeon. <laughs> this is where Blanca's like, oh, I hate you. Love you, hate you. So if you can't do half pigeon on this side, listen to your body. Come onto your bum, right? If you're sticking with half pigeon, great. Otherwise, you're gonna come onto your back and take a figure four. Keep it simple. Notice the thought pattern that arrived, as I said, half pigeon. <laughs> let go of those expectations. Just let it be whatever it is today. Right? You're gonna use this body the rest of your life, so try to support it. Eight, seven. Maybe half pigeon on your back doesn't feel as fulfilling or isn't the same in some certain way on the other side, that's okay. Could have been a little bit different yesterday, 20 years ago, it's gonna be different every time you visit it. So let go of those expectations. The same goes for the rest of your day. Three, two. If you're on your back, you're kind of rocking and rolling to get through tabletop, we're gonna come slowly towards fallen triangle. So as you lift that irregular half pigeon, you're gonna slide the right leg underneath you, drop the back heel, and we'll reach your left fingers to the sky. Again, stability, stay lifted. Two, reach for a little bit of stretch here, maybe just on the breath in, and as you exhale, drop the palm, we'll press three-legged dog to peel open. If you wanna check out flip dog, or maybe wild thing, just make sure you're active. If you went for that flip dog, legs set up like bridge, ankles under the knees in line with the hips, you're gonna press one more time to reach. Nice job, exhale brings you back, downward facing. So again, taking yourself off of that automatic flow, feeling your way through this practice, breath first. Left toes to the sky, if you wanna reach them, feel open, go for it, three. Two, and then knee towards your nose. Step into low lunge. You're gonna take a big sweep towards the sky when you're ready and find the stability in your low back. So hips are leveling, they're starting to square. You get the ball of your back foot to kind of drive that right hip around. Inhales are starting to lift, right? Your rib cage gently away from the hips. Maybe your gaze follows fingers. One long breath in and then drop palms to step forward. Toes touch, inhale to lengthen, and exhale to fold. Now, all the way to standing, this time just a breath or two. Maybe gaze to follow fingers and release Uttanasana fold. Inhale to a longer spine, and as you step high plank, pause. Chaturanga through low, your version of it, knees up or down, and take your heart opener, three, Cat's out of the bag on this one, so maybe it's becoming a little more familiar. But again, release that death grip. We're not moving on breath, so just fill up one more. And then settle your knees. Cat, round and press, finish the breath out, open to cow. Open your throat and extended puppy. Press back, three, tented fingertips. Hips go wherever they're comfortable. You're working a little more into the shoulders. You're lengthening your low back. And then gently moving back to tabletop to set up your dolphin arms. Forearms underneath you, right? Elbows under shoulders. And then we'll press your biscuits to the sky. Find a little tilt in the tailbone. Drive those biscuits way up, belly is in. And we'll take the left leg to the sky. Go ahead and peel open. If it feels better to do a little kung fu, maybe you gotta do a little karate kick, wiggle toes, all the things that you need, right? But otherwise, get one more good breath here. Gaze is moving towards your thumbs. So you draw that left knee up towards your nose, half pigeon. What, what? Yeah, settle in. Maybe this side works, maybe it doesn't. Maybe you just love a little frog pose this morning, go for it. But if you're in regular half pigeon, which is what I'll cue this time, knees are in line with the hips. You can always take a block under the heart, forehead, your hip, so that you're supporting yourself. 
H7. Remember, it doesn't need to feel like the other side doesn't need to feel like it did yesterday. Non-possessiveness. Just let it be whatever it is. 5-4. All right, easier said than done. But that's why we call it a practice. So no stress. You're going to soften the jaw, soften your brow, wherever you're holding any kind of tension. Because <sighs> it's easier for your mind to follow if you start with your physical body. That's all. So as you gently find your palms, if you're coming out of regular half pigeon, remember you're lifting just enough to lace your left leg under fallen triangle, dropping the back heel, reaching the fingers if it feels better to peel open, something closer to wild thing, be my guest. But super expressive, a little rinse like you were a sponge, you could squeeze out any dead energy, rinse out all the blick, and then drop the palms, come back to three-legged dog. You can stay here or flip dog if you'd like. Maybe you're working with the right knee down. It's the same pose. Take another three. Nice job. Two. And then release, downward facing. Just get a good breath in here. Find that familiar space. Right foot's going to step to that low lunge. We're going to work the fingers to the sky. So as you reach, definitely find the stability in the low back. You can keep your back knee down if you'd like, or you can lift. But we're going to start that baby back bend, rolling the shoulders down, lifting the gaze and heart. But the real focus is on supporting your low back. So don't lose that three. <sighs> right? Use the breath two. And gently lower the knee if you'd like. We're working towards your humble warrior. Curl your toes, interlacing the hands behind you, or finding your elbows to fold over the front thigh and to drop your head. So a little bit of rounding like you did for cat, drawing the belly up and in, one more breath. I'm going to take a moment to root down through the feet and sweep up slowly reaching pyramid. Front leg is extending, all about the bum, tucking under, press the hips, lift the heart, belly is strong, three. Yeah, be playful in the wobbles, let go of those expectations and let whatever it is, <laughs> be. One more long breath in. <laughs> Which is normal, right? Heart opener, throat openers. And we're going to fold right into Parsvottanasana. So no stress. Right over your front thigh as you fold. <laughs> Tuck the chin. Keep a slight bend in your front knee. You didn't even drop your palms. It's the same pose for two, and with breath come rising through warrior one. Bend back into the front knee, open warrior two, and go ahead and land. As you set your gaze, again, strengthen the hips, flip your palms, reverse the warrior, and then windmill all the way down, high plank through low. Remember, we're going to pause as you inhale to open, up dog, or cobra. Heart opener, throat opener, exhale, downward facing. No thinking, feeling your way through left foot steps, lunge. Reaching for the sky, but building into that baby back bend, side to side might be a little bit different, might still have some wobbles, you're just working with whatever is. Right? Loosen up that death grip on perfection, drop your shoulders. Baby back bend, mostly rolling the shoulders down, throat open, heart open and then work your hands behind you. Lengthen, maybe find just the elbows and we'll take humble warrior, rounding over the front thigh. Again, same posture if you drop the palms. Love up on those wobbles because they make it 10 times harder. Good stability work. Drop your jaw if you can. And then slowly, a little slower this time, especially if you got a little bit dizzy as you come up through warrior one legs, we're coming into that pyramid posture. So front leg extends, all about supporting the low back, so press those hips under. In particular, you're going to squeeze your right hip, right biscuit. One more long breath in, open the throat, and exhale, slowly tuck the chin. Hinge from the hips into Parsvottanasana. So as you fold over the front thigh, squeeze the knees, press your big toes down. 
Those little suckers have tendons that connect through inner ankle, above the inner knee. So maybe it doesn't feel like much, but work those big toes. They're like little biceps for your ankles. And then come slowly up, warrior one. Take a longer breath in and peel open warrior two. Backside's perfectly fine. Go ahead and open. Set your gaze, reverse the warrior. And when you're ready, exhale, release. Chaturanga Dandasana. Upward facing those three breaths. Hip opener, heart opener, throat opener, and downward facing dog. Get a good breath in and a good breath out. Right, let yourself land in the palms. And as you come towards tabletop, gently bring your knees to your mat. So again, this is where your non-possessiveness comes in handy. If for some reason your knees or hips don't agree with this posture, we're going to set up Virasana. Eventually we're working into camel, so maybe grab some blocks. You're going to work camel, if that works. Underneath the palms you can grab anything you have around you, coffee table, uh, dining room table, chairs, maybe you have a couple of dogs. So Virasana normally, for those of us whose knees bend at least slightly, you're coming to sit maybe on a block, two blocks, bolster, or all the way down. Okay, heels are a little wider than your sits bones, and it's actually a really nice um, setup when you can't do something. It's actually harder <laughs> for Blanca, because she's going to be in camel pose the entire time. Here you're working the press of the hips. So squeeze the biscuits, press the hips. If you're working the camel variation, you're working the stretch in the front of the quads, and you can keep your chin tucked. Hold steady. If you're working Virasana and it works to get down onto the forearms, go for it. But instead of sinking the hips, keep them pressing. If for some reason you can get your back to the floor, by all means, but again, you're engaging the hips and pressing, because really the focus is the stretch to the quads, front of the hips, and the engagement of those glutes to support your low back. Wherever you are, three, two, especially if you're coming out of Virasana, maybe palms are coming to your feet. You can keep pressing those hips up towards your camel. Even if you're using ankles or blocks, all from strength. So again, hips press, quad stretch, and you're lifting those low ribs. Last three breaths, you're going to open your throat and breathe here, three. If this creates stress and your shoulders are coming up to your ears, you're going to tuck your chin a little, lengthen one more long breath in. Yeah, and then exhale, start with the tuck of your chin. Stack the spine and then gently pause. Child's pose. As you work knees a little bit wider, your toes can touch but they don't have to, and your bum doesn't need to get to the heels. But again, find that little place of comfort, familiar space, a little counterbalance. And you're starting to let in a little bit of ease as you come through tabletop when you're ready. This time you're crossing your legs, coming onto your bum, and we're going to work a supported fish. So you can grab um, couch cushions. If you take it the longer way, so there's less support for your top of your shoulders and your head, you'll notice it's a deeper back bend. Right, still building on your camel. If you took it the long way or put an extra pillow or something underneath your head, stack of books, you'll realize maybe you can breathe a little bit better or release that holding sensation in your physical body a little bit better. Hmm. You might even close your eyes. Eight. Just letting the work start to dissipate from your body. And any stress dissipate from your jaw, your brow, wherever you carry your tension. So three. Two. 
and gently. If you have time this afternoon or this morning, this evening, whenever you're taking your practice, maybe linger. Maybe you settle into a deeper shavasana. Otherwise, ever so gently tuck your chin. Maybe reaching arms out in front of you, engaging to come up through seated, just finding a gentle position. You might even sit on the couch cushion or bolster. And taking a moment, right, with gratitude, coming back to the body, palms to heart. Moving gently your thumb knuckles to forehead center with gratitude. Respect for this practice and those around us, we bow and we say namaste. And we'll see you guys soon.